about fertility health. So as I mentioned, I am CEO and founder of Fertility Health, but I'm also a lecturer in reproductive and molecular genetics at University College London. And it's from this that I've really been inspired to not only bring our academic expertise into the public, but also the cutting edge science that goes on inside the laboratory and to make it more readily accept, uh, accessible to others. We call this a reinvention of healthcare for women. And what I view this as uh, putting the control in a more preventative approach to women, having them control their own reproductive destinies and their own health care. We are an educated workforce of women who have access to information all of the time, but having access to information about our own bodies still becomes a little bit more restricted. We are nurturing a movement we call the mother of all movements to really create a new healthcare system that relies on remote testing and diagnostics, telemedicine and care that is readily available to anybody to test from home. And when we talk about our reproductive health, it's really important to address the many different facets that are involved in reproductive health more broadly, not just fertility. Many fertility um, treatments or views towards fertility or infertility more, more appropriately create almost a silo when it comes to both the research and the acknowledgement of uh, fertility and fertility support. At Fertility, despite the name, we are really uh, dedicated to the other elements that are associated with our reproductive health as a whole. After all, we cannot create a separate identity for our fertility when it is encompassed within our reproductive health. So we are here to address the many different facets that could affect somebody's fertility, be it through physical, mental or social reasons. The When we talk about the gender health gap, really, I think this is a term that does a disservice uh, more broadly to the appalling statistics across women's health. We already know that there is terrible number of um, funding that goes into women's health globally. Um, but what we're really looking at here is separate issues across the lack of data that exists, the awareness as a, at a population level as to acknowledging someone's own symptoms and realizing that these may be indicative of a given pathology. And as a result, the lower diagnosis or the um, longer delays to getting a diagnosis in a reproductive health condition. And then the more broad statistics around the, num the prevalence of infertility and the growing need for fertility treatment or treatment across individual reproductive health needs. So we really exist to empower women through reproductive health education, diagnostics and care. And when we look at the gaps in reproductive health care and the provisions, really what we see is that far fewer women than expected will actually seek help for a reproductive health condition. Fewer than 50% of women will actually approach uh, a specialist for a reproductive health condition. Very often we see these are down to statistics around, um, you know, a lack of provisions or a lack of acknowledgement or symptom dismissal. But really, when it comes to symptom dismissal, women are the first people to dismiss their own symptoms through a lack of education around what is a symptom versus what is expected as a woman through your reproductive health. And when we look at some of the statistics around how many women leave their jobs when they reach menopause versus how many people wait until they reach a, a an actual decision to seek health um, help. Many of this is down to limited access to specialists and also a limited um, availability of reliable support. So we are pioneering change through our um, at-home test. We are doing this starting with our hormones, our biometrics and our symptoms. What we have created with Fertility is an at-home test that enables women to access information about their reproductive health um, from the comfort of their home. Now, how this works is actually quite simple, but behind the scenes, the underlying um, proprietary data and algorithms that have gone into this are very complicated. Um, I'll make an attempt to 
talk you through the process, how it works through a customer's journey. Um, and all of the, the first thing I will say is that we have created this with the customer in mind, with the idea that information around reproductive health, around diagnostics should not be complicated and certainly around individual hormone levels. I don't think anybody looks at an individual hormone result when they've had their bloods taken and thinks 10, micro, 10, 10 micrograms per milliliter is something that is accessible or understandable, especially when they're in a vulnerable state being a patient receiving results. So we have endeavored to make sure everything is very, very clear. From the initial virtual health assessment that we have created, this health assessment actually contains internally embedded algorithms that help us to determine which hormones we should test the patient or person for. Throughout the virtual health assessment, we take into account information around lifestyle factors such as diet and exercise types, uh, reproductive health conditions that may be impacting somebody's uh, fertility, non-reproductive health conditions, which also have an effect on people's overall health and fertility, but also impacts um, information around their uh, menstrual cycle and any me menstrual cycle symptoms that may be occurring. So when somebody does this virtual health assessment, we take into account um, all of their uh, symptoms, um, their biometrics, their menstrual cycle history and their medical history to tailor uh, which panel of hormones we will test them for. We have over 30 different panels of hormones, depending on what combinations of symptoms and biometrics that person selects. To give an example, if somebody selects uh, all of the symptoms according to the Rotterdam criteria, we will then test them for PCOS, meaning we will test their thyroid, their androgens, their um, cycling hormones, as well as their AMH. When we talk about fertility tests, many people naturally assume that we are just going to test AMH. We will never test AMH in isolation. Our test takes into account all of the relevant factors of somebody's virtual health assessment, but also their cycling hormones, their thyroid, their androgens, and their AMH. And if somebody has triggered perhaps hypothalamic amenorrhea, as they are telling us they're over-exercising, we'll test the hormones associated with that. As I mentioned, we have over 30 different panels of hormones, depending on the results or the answers that somebody tells us within their virtual health assessment. So put simply, a test will arrive at somebody's house within two days, where they can test using um, a small vial of 800 microliters of blood. They will then send this to our accredited labs. The results of their bloods in combination with their virtual health assessment answers are then uh, coded into a personalized report. How this report is broken up into is somebody's ovarian reserve and fertility, their ovulation and period, their thyroid hormone health, their um, lifestyle factors. But this proprietary algorithm actually takes into account over 54,000 variables to enable us to distill this message into a very personalized report to tell the person, hi there, you have told us your symptoms of um, this plus this in combination with your hormone results may be a likely indicator of a potential diagnosis. What's more is that we do not want anybody to receive results without actually and next steps. So we are dedicated to cre creating very clear answers and actionable next steps. Our current next steps are through telemedicine, whereby they can speak with one of our consultants. Um, they can be referred to one of our partner clinics. We can refer them for a scan with one of our in-house uh, consultants, or they can be referred for nutritional uh, support. We have also got um, mental health support because many people receive results that they would not necessarily be seeking in the first place. So ongoing care is really what's un underpinning our offering through this test. When we talk about the different people that approach us, many people assumed in the in initial outset that we would only receive um, requests for tests from people who are actively trying to conceive. And in fact, we see far higher uh, numbers of women who are just curious about their reproductive health. This has given us insights into the true data around how many women do actually have an innate curiosity around their fertility and their reproductive health. We break up the um, customer archetypes into four different categories from now. Uh, just curious, experiencing symptoms, planning for the future, or actively trying to conceive. This enables us to tailor the ongoing care, but also the report, as those who are just curious don't necessarily want to know about um, preconception care, and those who are experiencing symptoms very often have had a long diagnosis time and are looking for immediate treatment. 
So this informs how we can approach our next steps with our patient. But we are far more than a test and a treatment solution. We are very much a data-driven diagnostic tool. And this has been our mission from the outset. Our algorithm at present can predict nine of the most common diagnostic, nine of the most common gynecological pathologies and signpost other pathologies not listed here, such as endometriosis. Our current algorithm can actually predict endometriosis with 87% confidence through just our um, virtual health assessment and test. What's really important for us is the fact that we are really using current diagnostic criteria and guidelines to inform our tests. The, the reason we tailor every individual test is that when we have a prediction of a given pathology, we then qualify that prediction with appropriate testing, appropriate hormone testing, according to diagnostic criteria and guidelines, which enables us to close that predictive diagnostic loop. Of course, we cannot rely on everybody to be honest, um, even though we hope they are. What is fundamentally um, important to us is to then finalize our predictive algorithms through clinical trials. Um, we are building the largest data set of female gynecological pathologies, and our clinical trials aim to uh, prove these predictive algorithms through both the virtual health assessment our tailored um, hormone testing, and then follow on care. So we will, we will then um, further substantiate our predictions through scanning and through um, a database of women with um, confirmed pathologies through surgical um, outcomes. The most important thing to us, in addition to the data, is that we are um, the only at-home test that is improved, approved and regulated across the EU. Um, this was fundamental from the outset that we would be backed by the Quality Care Commission. Um, our CQC approval actually allows us to both diagnose and screen, to treat and to prescribe. So really what we're offering here is not just indications for pathologies and, to, and diagnostics through testing, but the full end-to-end -end service whereby we can actually assess somebody, diagnose them, speak with them, and then treat them through prescriptions um, all from the comfort of their home. While we acknowledge that many um, wish to see somebody in person, which is what we um, allow through our referrals, actually there are many women for whom they have said the idea that they would not have to leave their home, not have to speak or, or not have to have a physical examination in the first instance to receive information around how they approach secondary care. When it comes to gynecological health and reproductive health conditions, we already know that there is a um, significant um, taboo around women's health. And for many, the idea of being able to test in private and receive a recommendation or a referral to secondary care much sooner through this method is a lot, um, is, is a relief. We uh, could not do any of this without the excellent work of our clinical team and advisors. This is just some of the team that we are working with. And Really, what we believe is that this is when we talk about a reinvention of healthcare, that this requires actually the involvement of the participants. And when we initially started our clinical trials, we were consenting women in clinic where they are already at a heightened sense of um, anxiety. They're already be there for an another reason. They are feeling um, scared and vulnerable. And when we approach our clinical trials differently now through the power of social media and just public advocacy and awareness through um, asking at the end of our webinars whether somebody would wish to be involved in our clinical trials and help us with our data, we really see an, an, an incredible um, empowerment of women to actually want to help themselves and other women. So this, we really feel it's a new movement in clinical treatment and clinical trials. If anybody would wish to join what we call the reproductive revolution to build out our clinical, um, clinical team or to assist us with our uh, clinical trials, please do get in touch. And thank you for your time today. We are a growing team of largely female-led scientists and clinicians, and we are hoping to change the way reproductive health is viewed and to reduce infertility for non-medical reasons for to one in 50. Many thanks for your time today.